My name's Matt Widgery from mattwidgery.com. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing uh, the Manfrotto Compact MK C3 H01. <sighs> Sorry, just dozed off there. Why is it that all tripods have to have such boring names? Why can't anybody come up with the uh, Manfrotto Fireball or the uh, the Giotos uh, Nuclear Extravaganza? I don't know. But anyway, we're going to be reviewing that and it's got some pros and cons which we'll come to in a minute. But first of all, I just wanted to go through some news. You may well notice how dandy and fine I'm looking with this brilliant t-shirt. This is the uh, range of t-shirts that F-Stop Lounge do. Um, it's from their 8-bit series and what they do is they take classic cameras and they make them in this kind of 8-bit pixelated form, which I think is rather nice. This one is the um, is a Polaroid. I, I'm not, but I think I've got this camera, and I'm still not very good at what it is. I think it's the 635 CL. Hang on a minute. I'm going to see if I can find it. One sec. Yes, there we go. Right. Sorry for disappearing off camera for a minute, but that's that. Look, it is the 635 CL. There you go. Look at that. Isn't that funky? So they do these. I've got another one which has got a, a Nikon on it, which has got that little dash thing with the little red dash on it, which is very cool. Um, you, you know that um, little red sort of scoop thing that's on the uh, on the little hand grips that, that Nikon have. Um, that's uh, that was designed by. Um, yeah, I shall put it up in post because I can't remember. But it's a very famous, mainly famous for doing car designs, actually. And he put that on the first Nikon when it was with the film cameras. I think it was on the F3, something like that. Um, anyway, so that's that. So if you're in the market for really fantastic T-shirts, they do a whole range of them and they're brilliant. And it's not just this range of the um, the, the, the 8-bit T-shirts. They've got a whole um, you know range of great stuff in their store there. So go and have a look. Um, in other news, before we get onto the tripod, um, if you are in Cambridge from the, well, on the 24th of this month, that's August 2014, if you're watching this at some point in the future, but um, August the 24th, uh, 2014, if you come down to Otto's Cafe on Mill Road in Cambridge, uh, it's the opening night of my exhibition Mill Road Faces, which is my street photography exhibition. Uh, come down, there's going to be wine and nibbles and things like that, and the launch of the exhibition. And the exhibition is slightly different. Rather than having it in a gallery, um, because it's a street photography exhibition, I thought it'd be rather cool to actually have it in the street. Mill Road Faces, it may not surprise you to learn, a lot of the pictures were taken on Mill Road, um, which is quite a famous street for being um, very eclectic and interesting and fun in Cambridge, and it's somewhere that has a, a great personal um, attachment for, for me. Um, so a lot of the pictures are taken on Mill Road, um, and, and they're kind of, they're, they're fly posted up down there. They will be from the 24th onwards. So there's going to be a launch and there's going to be some pictures at Otto's Cafe um, on the walls and then they're going to be um, uh, then they're going to be sort of spread out down down Mill Road and you'll be able to see them there for the next few weeks after that if you can't make it down on the 24th but if you can it'll be brilliant and I look forward to seeing you there. Um, so uh, that's that. Other things, um, thank you very much for all the people that came to my workshop on Saturday. We, I did a street photography workshop in Cambridge. Um, it was brilliant. I think everybody had a really great time and from all the pictures that have been coming through from the group, I've just been really genuinely just blown away by the standard of the photography that's been coming out of that group. It's just been amazing how much, um, the, 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 how much creativity and just unique perspectives um, everybody brought to that day and made it really really special and the vibe was really cool and, and what was really nice was that um because it, it was a pretty big group in the end um like there were sort of like 20 of us which is you know as, as much as you'd ever want I think for like a like a photo walk because we, we did like a classroom thing and then went out and and you know walked the streets of Cambridge with cameras um and it, it's about as big as you can really sort of give everybody you know like proper attention it was a bit oversubscribed to be fair but what was nice about that was that uh, everybody was really kind of keen to help each other out there was a great amount of, of, of difference in experience levels and um, the more experienced photographers were really helping the, the the sort of new guys out that were just getting into it new guys and girls that were just picking up the cameras for the first time or you know weren't maybe so familiar with some of the settings that we were talking about it from the classroom bit um, and you know everybody uh, helped each other which was great um, if you um, did come along to that workshop and you're interested, there is a prize uh, for the best photograph that came out of that day. Um, it's going to be one of my signed prints from the exhibition Mill Road Faces. The closing date uh, to get your entries to me is uh, Sunday the 17th of August. Um, so get them in by then. Um, if you go on to um, facebook.com uh, forward slash anarchic image, that will get you through to my Facebook uh, street photography page. Um, you can submit them 
them through there or if you go to the street photography workshop event page that you clicked on and, and joined to come along to the workshop and put them on there that'd be great either way i'll find them um and then the, um, it gives me a week then to judge them and the uh the, the prize will be announced on the 24th at the exhibition opening night so that's that uh right that's news uh let's come on to the manfredo because uh, it's a tripod that um, has mixed feelings for me. I've been using it for about four months now and um, I have had some very, very positive experiences with it and some uh, not so positive. So let's have a look at it in detail and see exactly uh, whether or not it's something that you would be interested in buying for yourself. Um, so the pros of it, um, look how small it is. I mean, when it's uh, when it's folded up like that um, and its little handle thing goes down, um, it's, I don't know, it's probably 40 centimetres tall, so that's what, a foot and a bit, foot and a half maybe, less than a foot and a half tall. So it's very compact and it's really lightweight. It's not um, it, it's not uh, carbon fibre or anything and you wouldn't expect it to be for the price point. This is the other thing, this is an incredibly cheap tripod. This was like 40 quid. You know, for a Manfredo tripod, that's, um, that's very, very cheap indeed. Um, we'll come on to whether or not that's perhaps um, a good thing or not as we go through this review. But let's have a look at the main functionality and the, the sort of reasons you might be interested in a tripod like this. Obviously it's compact, it's called a compact, so you expect it to be small. But um, it does something rather more than that. It actually, um, it, it kind of, it, it doubles as a, a sort of video tripod-ish as well as being, you know, having the capability to do stills. So what you've got is this sort of weird head thing, which on, in, in one sense is a, is a ball head and uh and moves freely to allow you to sort of get you know all your dutch angles and things like that um but the other way that you do it uh, you, you can actually do this is is to lock that uh lock the position of it so that it only uh only operates um it, you know in in a pan uh like that um or in a um, in, in a vertical like that going going on its little you know it's got little grooves there on the balls that you can actually lock it so that it only goes into those positions now, that's all very well and good, you may say, but look, it's kind of, it's in that position. It's sort of not doing it. It's kind of moving all over the place. And this is what we, this is, this is what I found in the reality of it. It's not very well executed, or at least it's not very well built. Um, it doesn't really matter which of these positions you put it in now. And bearing in mind, this is only four months old. It kind of doesn't make any difference anymore. It sort of just does what it wants to do. Um, the other thing is that it, what you're supposed to be able to do in either mode um, to kind of lock the ball thing in place, you've got this little wheel thing, which is like a little thumb wheel. It's a great idea. What it's supposed to do is you slacken it off by pulling it towards you. You can move that to wherever you want. And then if you push it forward, it tightens it up to a point where it'll lock. But it, it doesn't really lock. It, it moves still and if you try and push it too far what tends to happen you get this sort of click thing happening and then it it, it doesn't undo again it's just really sort of not very well thought out um so that's that um so the the, the head tends not to stay very still uh, unless you've got using the d5100 um with the 3518 on it which is a pretty short lens so the you know the center of gravity is still pretty much towards the middle of the camera it was all right but as soon as i put the um like the the 17 to 50 that the, the the sigma 17 to 50 which i'm using this on now just i mean it's not a huge lens by any stretch it's definitely not a 70 to 200 28 but it is a little bit longer and it meant that on that camera the weight of it just started to come forward a little bit and it, it was it was knocking it and moving it down um, and when I when I was trying to lock it sort of in a in a sort of more like vertical position like that to do macros and stuff like that, I found that it was just wanting to drift the whole time and just sort of flop all the way to the vertical, regardless of how tight I I, I did the little um, the little ball thing, you know. So that wasn't great. Now the other thing that that was disappointing or it was the little feet on the bottom here. Um, as you can see, it's got these kind of little rubber feet which are pretty standard on on all tripods to uh, protect uh, wooden floors to give it a bit of, of, of grip. So like you know, it's not going to slide around so much if it's on a shiny surface. Um, one of these fell off really quickly. I mean, I'd only had it a few weeks and I'd taken it to an event. I think it was at the NEC in Birmingham, from what I remember. And uh, I, was, I was shooting some some corporate stuff up there, and um, and I didn't notice it had fallen off. I had this kind of strapped to the back of the camera bag, um, which is kind of how I carry this thing around. Um, and that fell off, um, which was which is really disappointing. Um, so, you know, let, let's let, let's not be too harsh on it. It is a forty quid tripod, right? I mean, 
you know, you get, you pay your money, you take your choice. Um, you know, if you wanted to, to if, if you paid £200 for that and it fell apart, you'd be pretty annoyed. But at the same time, I, I think personally that for a brand like Manfrotto to put something out at any price point that is just not that great, I, I think is disappointing. You know, I, I, you know, there, there is a, there is a level of expectation with, um, with premium brands that you're going to get a, a premium product and if they launch something at 40 quid then it ought to be fit for purpose okay you're not going to get carbon fiber for that money um but but look i mean the materials that it's made out of it's got some basic um kind of aluminium legs you know the the polycarbonate itself is is, is all right i mean it doesn't feel the the nicest but it doesn't feel weak by any, there's no real flex in that kind of um in that kind of pistol grip um sort of device that they've got um so the, it's not the materials necessarily. I think it is just something in the design, and there's no excuse for that at any price point, in my opinion. So uh, for 40 quid, would I recommend this? No, I really wouldn't. Uh, if you do want something that will um, that, that will kind of double up as a, as a bit of a video tripod and, and, and get that kind of stuff done, for a little bit more money, you can get the, the, the Velbon stuff. Uh, I think they start from about 70 or 80 pounds, and the uh, the build quality on those is a bit better, and it'll it'll take a, a bigger load, it'll tighten up more. They are bigger and heavier. Um, actually, the Giotos tripod that I'm filming this on, I will do a review of um, in the uh, not-too-distant future because I'm really impressed by that. Um, I bought that secondhand, and I paid 50 quid for that. It's carbon fiber. The quality of it is amazing, and if I can get one for 50 quid secondhand on Gumtree, you can find them for similar money, I am sure. I think new they were about three hundred pounds, including the the ball head that comes with it. Um, but being carbon fiber, it is very very lightweight, and it does this weird thing with the legs. So because normally, like the longest bit of the tripod is where the legs fold down like that, because um, they fold down beyond the center column. But the way that the um, the Giotos does it is it actually you can release the legs and they flip up that way and that kind of slides up into itself so that it only becomes kind of like the length of that, which is really clever. And the other amazing thing, which I'm just really impressed with it, is that it has a, a like one of the legs actually unscrews and becomes a monopod as well. You can actually just fit that stretch, fit um, you know your uh, your ball head directly onto the end of the monopod. It's fantastic. It's a really really cool thing. But we'll come on to that in a future edition. Um, so please uh, subscribe to the channel it really really helps me there's lots and lots i want to grow and develop with this channel and it's all predicated on the amount of, of viewers and subscribers that i get in order to get you know things moving with this channel so that i can provide more content better content more higher quality stuff um you know all that stuff so i really want to grow this into something cool so it helps me enormously if you subscribe so either do it in the youtube button underneath there that says subscribe click on that um, or the button that's on screen now just just jab 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 onto that and, and subscribe to it because it'll really help me out and I really appreciate all you've done uh, I've noticed the, the viewing figures on these um, uh, videos sort of starting to creep up now um, and I hope that they get more and more as time goes on and I really really appreciate every single one of you that's viewed this video much appreciated thank you very much thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again soon cheers